I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a really fun video with the map repost, 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 whatever it is, how you say it, but it's a really good one, good strategy, and let's take a look at it. Before we begin, like, subscribe, all button below. Appreciate all the support of all the community and uh, meeting really great people out there and can't thank you guys enough at 2,000 subs doing a free premium DD giveaway. So let's get right to it. Repost. This is a fun one. Um, I've actually been working around a lot, playing with different um, clans, storm leagues, typhoon leagues. I played against one hurricane, so actually uh, very interesting to see there and a uh, good perspective as always. But uh, this team I'm playing around, shout out to them, is FPS, uh, ranked in the storm league. So really awesome. Thank you for letting me play. And we're taking using this um, opportunity to talk and build a discussion and have a blast doing it as well. So what is the strategy right here? We're on the northeastern side with the uh, standard enemy team, uh, uh, building in the southwest here and uh, today we are in the vampire 2 um, actually I've been playing this a little bit uh, having played the druid now time, trying to uh, time to change it up a little bit now uh, you're playing with the druid kind of like the sister cousin what you, you want to call it you get kind of like the daring class build however different countries different gun builds um, the druid has the two four facing guns vampires like a daring but just uh, one less rack of torpedoes and guns so it's a little bit uh, I would say a, a unique play style in the sense it has the crawling smoke generator and has 5.8 concealment. So what can you do with something like that? So what would I do is I would try to sneak into a cap and try to take it over and uh, contest the cap. Very, very good at that. But you got to be very, very cautious about pushing in the center right here because of the radar that is available to the other team. Uh, the other um, the other thing I like about it is the gun power. It's just a lot, a lot of really good uh, fire starting capabilities, great AP damage. It's kind of got the best of uh, every world that you would want in a destroyer, so I really like it a lot. So what is the strategy right here for the daring? I'm sorry, vampire. For the vampire, we are going to basically do a Alpha Bravo push. So the reason why I said that, because this map, for, for some reason, in my personal opinion, is a more of a counterclockwise movement, while the other the enemy team is going to probably push Charlie and this clockwise or clowner clockwise movement as well that's kind of what it looks like and how most uh, there's actually a few maps that operate this way and they work pretty well with this fluid moment and it's kind of just how the the setup and the the map works and how people and human beings react to it and i think that works the best but what we do is have the one destroyer either one have option to go straight into alpha but the problem is you have no exit strategy because you get stuck by this little mountain right here and i normally don't like it because i can't go north and the only other direction is go south or turn back around and then you're caught in radar coverage and you can get blown away so i don't like that so what i normally do with any kind of destroyer at alpha cap i kind of go wide spot first and then I engage out here to the northwest see if there's any kind of a destroyer player right here once you find out it's clear or engage you have either options of egressing which is i always like having an exit strategy or you have the option to actually push in and then cap in reverse and then take over alpha so that's that one option right there the other destroyer in this strategy is a shimikaze that we have so anything with good concealment and speed and they'll go straight into Bravo and throw the enemy off. Because most of the time I've seen what uh, people do is they kind of negate Bravo. They kind of don't really just leave it alone. They want to either contest Alpha or their heavy push Charlie, but they really forget about Bravo. And it's a really good thing to sneak into there, especially on the northern side, and take it over and see where it goes. Like if you start capping and you start, you get radar, get spotted, you have the option of exiting this to the north and go to alpha or cap it and then go straight into alpha using island cover right here. And then you can take over alpha and then egress back. So again, multiple exit strategies for the destroyer at Bravo. So I like that strategy right there. The other uh, technique we also wanted to have is a battleship staying in the back with a cruiser contesting Charlie just to slow the enemy team down while the bulk of the force, which is the, uh, the rest of the cruiser fl uh, fl fleet, which is normally three radar cruisers, will either push into Alpha and then swing around with the destroyer in tow. And then you have another uh, cruiser going to Alpha and then also hold right here at Bravo can contest either capping Bravo or having an enemy push. And this allows us to maximize our forces all the way at Alpha so we can do a massive flanking maneuver into their spawn and allows us to shoot from multiple angles. We have a battleship shooting from northern, and we also actually have the cruisers and the destroyers shooting from the western side of Bravo Give you a lot of, uh, I guess you could say choke points, a lot of, uh, a little, little bit of crossfire. It depends on what they plan on doing with the battleship to the north. But this is kind of the maneuver we plan on doing because normally what we see here, and then I'll, I'll move the ships to so you can actually see how it plays out. All right, so how this would actually look. So destroyer over there, cruiser in tow behind me, 
another cruiser pushing in the Alpha and then another cruiser in supporting a Bravo. So the option is to have these two cruisers hold and push into Alpha Bravo while the other supporting destroyer. He can either loiter around Alpha Bravo and then start flanking while the battleship and the cruiser right here are just kind of in support in a defensive mo mode and can kind of try to see where is the enemy team going to be at. Normally what we've seen is we'll have a destroyer go way out to the northwest uh, here. Another cruiser goes out north. We have usually a radar cruiser of some kind parks right there. And then you have, of course, the, uh, the destroyer out to the east of Charlie going out in the flanks. One cruiser parks here. Another cruiser I see, it depends on where they, um, the team you're playing, but normally I've seen them linger around this area right here with the battleship kind of uh, supporting them. So this is kind of what the normal layout I've seen is. Now, what are the good and bad advantages of this? From the northeast side, I feel like, they have more of an advantage, in my personal opinion, because uh, obviously the red team is going to take, um, or the southern team is going to take Charlie with these islands right here. Very good cover, very good, uh, a lot of open space right here with a DD to flank and, you know, really spot you from them. Very, very annoying at Charlie. That's why I don't play it like that. I like using the Alpha Bravo from the north because... You also have the reverse. You have tons of air, rental, or sorry, real estate out here where you can maneuver, flank, and take out a destroyer. And then, you, of course, you have all the space in the back and these island covers, so you can actually go find cover, grab cover, use them to mask your movement. And then you have options to shoot into Bravo. You have options to shoot into Charlie. So that's why I like uh, certain aspects of this map from the northern side. From the southern side, it's a different, completely different strategy. But um, let's take a look at the video and see actually how this actually turns out with Vampire 2. All right, team, here we are on the map repost with a Vampire 2, and you can see as we're speeding up the video, you can see initial positioning there. We have Shimakaze going into Bravo. We have the Napoli, Montana going to the south contest and kind of just delay Charlie while we have the main bulk of our force, uh, mostly uh, cruisers, uh, going with the Vampire in, over to the western flank of Alpha. To uh, And for me as a destroyer player, I want to go out there and spot the DD and then spot any kind of other offensive threat that may um, pose uh, an issue with us at Alpha. So already we're opening up on the Des Moines because I can see that, hey, I've got support, I have numbers, so why not try to burn the Des Moines down? Now the Vampire tube, you don't know, is like a daring, just fast reload, one less rack of torpedoes. It has a five kilometer hydro, which is really good, and it has the crawling smoke, which means you gotta be at quarter speed for it to be effective, and you can move slowly at quarter speed with the smoke screen that lasts approximately about a minute plus or so. Um, fairly long, pretty decent. Um, so why not? We have the numbers. Now, we also spot the other DD out there, which is the gearing. So that's also a good thing we're supposed to be doing. Gearing, I don't know why, revealed himself. He begins to open up, and now we're going to switch target priority is eliminate all destroyers first right off the bat. Be a good destroyer player doing that. You give yourself an advantage for your team. Knocking out as many destroyers on their team as possible gives them less spotting, less smoking, less torping, and pretty much everything possible known to man to win the game. So... Gearing is pretty much still within radar coverage, so it looks like we got these nice um, little glimpses of him there, here and there. We're going to take real free shots. Any kind of damage we can take off, like the gearing right now, will pay off in dividends, because why? He doesn't have any heals. Uh, that way, any damage we take off now, it sticks. So that's a good thing. Now, we're going to keep pushing forward. I have a 5-kilometer hydro, and my thought is, did the gearing run out of his smoke? Why not? Um, I don't know. He probably ran away and retreated a full away from our radar coverage and so forth. So I don't think I'm going to pop my hydro here because it'd be wasted because he's not within range. Know the limitations of your your weapons and your your skills and maximize the abilities of your ship. And that avoids you wasting. And so many times I've seen people pop hydro five kilometers away, which it doesn't do anything. Many times I've seen uh, the cruiser radar to cruisers pop their radar when they know definitely they are not within range of anything. So it's definitely a waste. Again, I know I would try to learn your limitations of your ship to use them maximum effectively. Look, I'm, I initially try to stay out of the Des Moines 10 kilometer radar range, which I know that his is a limitation for radar. So why not? Currently, the, the smoke screen left by the gearing is giving me shielding. Again, knowing the mechanics of the game, allowing me to free shoot without being spotted inside or on the other side of a smoke. It's like a wall of islands right there in front of me with the, using that smoke as cover. And that gives me free shots. I call for my team to radar and spot the Des Moines so that I can therefore shoot them in Des Moines uh, and try to burn them down. The Vampire is really, really good just along with the daring. Uh, the very good and capable ship at starting a lot of fires. These torpedoes are also great. You see how they can be single launched, so I can launch like one at a time and get those nice precise shots, and it really throws off a lot of players. Fortunately for him, he actually dodges and sees it up. He must have had his hydro running, so that's a good thing for him. 
We're going to see if we can get some shells. I don't know what's wrong with these shells. I've been trying to aim. Look, I'm aiming right at the middle horizon line, right in the midship of his, uh, air, his ship. And he's actually driving into them, so I figure I'm leading him. But, man, I am just not getting these sh shells on target today. There's a little floating. Now, he's within 10 kilometers. He's popped his radar, but that's okay. He's being distracted. Ooh, he takes out a lot of damage from our cruiser player. And we're going to see if we start another fire right here. He's probably damaged con. He doesn't have that anymore, so any fire we get sticks. And if I just get a superstructure, my goodness, I'm aiming right at it. And there it is, Flash 1. We get one radar cruiser down. That's a good kill for us right there, taking a radar cruiser down. But we lose our Shimakaze on the uh, central portion of the map there, and that is not good. We need that Shimakaze player. Like I said, having more destroyer players in the game increases your odds of winning. So it's kind of, uh, e kind of even, if you want to call it that, uh, right now. Looks like we're going to have to see if we can burn down this Ohio. Ohio's guns are not looking at us, and we're just inside of his secondary range, but he's focused on somebody else, which is good. So we get free shots. We just took solid exclamation point pop red there. It means the Conde is shooting at us. Again, he's probably going to waste his shots that far away, so we're going to keep juking the throttle back and forth. That's a good thing. See, I can juke and, and continue shooting without looking because every time you see the exclamation point go red, I change a vector. I either slam on the brakes, go reverse, or go full forward, or turn right, or do something. Change any kind of vector that... I've throws off any kind of shells. There's an exclamation point again, and I'm going to go full throttle. See, I'm just basically using that. Look, I'm checking the shot. Where is it at? Yep, and roll behind it. So again, you can do that a lot. You can do multiple things at one time if you use a lot of the mechanics together as a good destroyer player. So I'm going to keep firing and trying to start another fire in this Ohio. So far, we got four fires total for the game. Another exclamation point. We're going to try to turn a little right, throw off the shots, juke a little bit more. See if we can get another perma fire on this Ohio here, and... We're taking some nice chip damage off him, but unfortunately he is out of our line of sight and through a mountain. And we have Alpha and Bravo Cap. We're good. Our Napoli, Montana up in the northeast are, uh, you know, taking that Puerto Rico kind of out of the game. Now we're going to focus on the Conde because he's driving in solo by himself. When you see somebody, here's a good tip for you guys. If you see somebody driving in solo, that is the perfect opportunity that says, hey, shoot me and burn me down. Because uh, it is very difficult World of Warships to go in solo um, and really try to take on three to four ships uh, especially by yourself without anybody absorbing any kind of damage or, uh, you know, taking the heat off of you. So you can see right there we got HE shells all over the plates on the Conde. Now the Conde is a deadly ship, a deadly super ship in my personal opinion. Very, very strong in clan battles. Unfortunately, it is also a squishy ship. If uh, you get the right angles and you just get enough fires going on it like any ship, it just burns down just like a match anyway. So Vampire, very good. Very good reload light. Look at the reload light on this thing. Very good. This is like a full kind of DPM gunboat build that I can get on the Vampire. Ohio goes down finally, thank goodness. And we're going to try to get as much DPM on the Conde as possible, not only with alpha damage, with fire damage as well. And you can see it is just melting him away. I mean, he is just it takes a while for him to drive in, even with an engine boost. And uh, he's just not going to be able to survive driving in. Like I said, if you see any kind of ship driving in solo, that just means boom, splash two for them to asking for it to burn down all right we got uh, basically five ships to three this still is anybody's game i mean it, they still have the possibility of winning unless we can take out their gearing finally gearing goes down it is now a four on two and we are going to speed this up a little here and we're going to see what we're going to do i wanted to take out the other gearing another role for the destroyer vampire is good at is taking on other destroyers but unfortunately we have a petro here and we are well within his 12 kilometer radar it only lasts about 12 to 14 seconds so we're going to take advantage of running away and using island cover there he goes he pops he finds out where we're at and i guess what he probably is going to shoot us yep he shot at us i'm making sure i don't run in this island and ooh, nice he misses us right there this is a good thing we're going to use island for cover we're going to go behind and let those torpedoes do its thing uh oh we have a gearing taken alpha cap now i've called for my annapolis to make sure he keeps him spotted as we take on this uh petra Pavlovsk. and the napoli is rushing back from our other side to work so it's still it's kind of like a two versus two right now with the napoli way out in the distance so we'll see what we can do right here our goal is not to die the longer the destroyer player can last usually typically is the savior of the game because destroyers pretty much do everything in the game all right, we're going to go open up an AP. And look at the AP on the Vampire. There's nothing to gawk out either, especially broadside cruisers. And we reset him from Cap and Bravo, which is a good thing. And see, look, we're getting 693 damage on a Petro. It's not bad for AP shells on a Destroyer, right? Look, 693. We're just getting those right hits right there. And I actually hit the wrong button. And let's see if we can get some more. I want to switch to HE in a minute here to get some. Ooh, look at the 1,700 damage at these bright spots. I thought Petro was a little bit more tankier in certain aspects. But, man, even a, a uh, vampire, don't be afraid. Even a vampire destroyer can uh, take down some AP damage there. We start a fire on the nose there, which is good. We start working our way down the, the line. We got another fire right there on the second portion of the ship. He damages Khan, so it means the next one's going to stick. 
And uh, they got those uh, Soviet, you know, kind of uh, quick cooldowns. Ooh, we already got another fire going. That was quick. Yeah, those dam their damage cones don't last uh, long, and the cruisers, uh, they burn a lo long, long time. So any kind of fires we get going now will last for the majority of the time. And like I said, vampires, man, they burn everything down like a flamethrower. So uh, we got Alpha Bravo still under our contest. And we're leading by 500 points in my tour. As long as we don't die right here, we're going to keep the fires gum. Uh, we call for Annapolis to pop the radar, keep him spotted. And I think he gets him just fine. We've got our smoke screen going, so it means he can't see us. And we've got the single launch torpedoes. Again, that's why I like the Vampire. It's it's kind of along the lines of the Research Bureau, like the Druid, uh, where you it costs Research Bureau points. But the cool thing it has, it has the guns, it has the torpedoes, it has the smoke screen, it has the hydro. It has a lot of everything you need, just the lacking of the heels. If the Vampire 2 had heels, man, this thing would be broken, okay? It'd be like the Daring. And um, pretty darn powerful, in my personal opinion. 5.8 concealment. I mean, there's nothing bad I can say about the Vampire 2 except for the lack of heels, but that would be overpowering. Here we go. You got the gearing. Now, here's a tip for you guys as short players. Always get the first shot off. First look, first kill. If you get a first look, you take that shot immediately and get as much damage as you can. It gives you an advantage. So right here, look. Where he takes 1,600 damage right off the bat and another 561 and 1,200. So he is already in a deficit, and he's got to kill our 22,000 health, his 18,000. That's not working. Switch to AP right there, and AP is deadly on the Vampire as always. This game is pretty much over. He's just going to melt at this AP, and it, it is deadly going up against a Vampire with this reload rate. And boom, friendly steel kill. It's okay. Anyways, um, great job playing with FPS. Thank you for letting me play with you guys. Let me know what you think about the strategy on the repost. It was a pretty fun one. Vampire 2, also very powerful. Check that ship out build will be at the end of the screen as always i hope you guys enjoy the video you take value out of this if you see we can do anything better let us know in the comments below if you have better ideas and techniques absolutely share with the community let us all get better at the same time as always until then you guys see me out there say hi and as always take care and stay safe cheers